Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear and I'm here to build the model kit and of course to hang out with all of you. And to start things off, I'm throwing the Bear Cave, the Lego, the site, the tier two blue emote and chat. If you are currently a subscriber, you can reply with those emotes. You can just say hi if you feel like saying hi. Use other people's emotes if you want to do that. Or if you feel like being a lurker and you don't want to say anything and you'd prefer we just move on. Well, yeah, don't say anything at all. Just lurk. Being a lurker is fine. It's a Monday. Arist fan is here. Hello, Arist fan. Throwing in those tier two emotes. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, one and all. It is indeed, 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 a Monday. Um, I thought for a second it wasn't Monday. I was like, wait, is it not Monday? It is Monday. Uh, I'm excited to hang out with all of you. I did a full shift of seven hours with a half an hour lunch break. So six and a half hours with the break of uh hey lord Crashton of customer service today and people don't know what business days are they don't know what federal holidays in the united states are hey lashbrook welcome they don't know any of that and they don't want to know the answers they 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 don't want the right and hmm. they don't want the answer i'm giving them is what i will say as why their package didn't arrive Forget they don't know that Saturday is not a business day. They're never going to learn that. But also that there was not going to be mail today in the United States. They just didn't know that. And they're like, what? It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a federal day where there's not going to be mail. U US, UPS is shipping, but you didn't buy it. You didn't get it shipped for UPS. It's being handed off to USPS and will not arrive today. Okay. You know, that's all it is. Uh, I do not get, uh, I, I do get not realizing it's all. Yes, Lord Crashington, I understand that some people will be like, hey, uh, it was expected to arrive in X amount of days. Why isn't this include? Why isn't it coming today? And I have to be like, well, it's a, it's a federal holiday, so it's not counted as a business day. Um, and yeah, and also it, people, it, it told people that. It told people that. Um, uh, but yeah, that was a, most of my day. Um, I will say, after uh, many hours of doing customer service, which was fine, um, I did go and run some errands. Uh, let's go to the overhead. We're working on the uh, working on the Gundam Age One normal, um, and we did the the most of the you know all of the top of the kit. We did the backpack here. We got the uh, head, chest, and arms done. And we're going to move on to the feet. We're going to do both feet here because um, this kit does have feet. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I did go out and run some errands because uh, there were a few things I needed. And I realized that I was running errands very close to the local Domino's. And I don't know if you've ever gotten this email about... Uh, the break the emergency glass you get a free pizza but basically if you spend a, a certain amount of money at Domino's uh, one time they will send you a deal basically uh, you can call it a coupon but it is a deal with your account for a free pizza and the idea is that they it's not it's free in that it doesn't cost you anything to get the pizza but there's minimums for delivery right so most people are going to go, oh, yeah, I'll get a free pizza. Wait, I don't want to buy 17 or 18 or 20 or $15 worth of other stuff, depending on, you know, where you are. Your your price may vary. Uh, some people are just like, I don't want to spend that money. Ah, fuck this. This is a scam. Um, because that's the thing, right? There's still going to be delivery minimum. So it's just like, well, do I want an extra free pizza? No, uh, not really. I kind of just want the free pizza. Well... I had thought that and kind of given up on it until I realized I'm by the Domino's. I'm just going to order and pick it up and tip. I tipped because yeah, I always do, um, but I'm just going to do that. So my pizza, my dinner tonight was $2 and tip because I was already out. It wasn't even like I made a special trip. So that was worth it. I got the bacon and onion uh, because that is my go-to, uh, the bacon and onion, uh, uh thin crust, because it, it's not, you know, it's a pizza product. It's not, it ain't pizza. 
So I might as well get something that I know I like. Uh, oh, let me label it. Sorry. Uh, I might as well just get something I know I like and will enjoy. And that, that is what I like. Because the onion absorbs the bacon grease. And it's just, it's, it's a tasty uh, bit of nonsense. So I did that. Um, I ate the whole thing. It's a medium. It's not that big. Uh, and that was good. That, that was my dinner. That was my treat after my long day of customer service nonsense. Um, I also tonight did some prep for my stream tomorrow. Uh, the original plan for tomorrow was to watch old wrestling and I have slightly altered that. We're still watching wrestling tomorrow, but it won't be that old. Um, I am going to do a introduction, a showcase, uh, if you will, of Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. We look at a lot of Japanese wrestling on Pat Watches Wrestling. We look at a lot of Joshi, uh, the women's wrestling. But we haven't really looked at Tokyo Joshi before because that's, I mean, they're, they're in their 11th year. They're not that old of an organization. Um, but I thought it would be fun to show some matches. We are gonna, I'm going to try to show a variety of matches, uh, both uh, ridiculously silly and badass, badass cool. Uh, I, I tried to say badassly. Uh, uh, super fucking dope is, I guess, how I would say it. Uh, now, so I'm going to try to show a blend of of some uh, various uh, uh, performers, uh, so you get kind of a sense of who I like in the badassly. Yes, badassly. I don't think works, um, but I, I want you to see what I see when I think of Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling, um, because I really, I really like the promotion. So that's tomorrow night, and I think that'll be fun uh, to look at some wrestling. Uh, uh, I got, uh, uh, I already have a few things. I have a very special, cool, fun bit of business Then I've got sil some silly stuff. Uh, and it's a nice little blend, uh, uh, of things, as I said. Uh, so I prepped some of that. I didn't do all of it because I have time tomorrow. Tomorrow, I don't really have anything until the stream. I'm going to, uh, moderate Jeff's, uh, uh, podcast recording because I'm, I'm mod, uh, Jeff's chat as, as you are aware. So I felt like, well, if I'm going to be there doing that, um, I could also get some video because right now what I need to do is rip some video stuff and then edit some of the video that I've ripped into, you know, because like the, the, I have access to just some matches, but I would like to grab a few that are only available via the full card. Uh, so I have to download the whole full card, which is fine, the whole show. And then I just want to rip that so I don't have to deal with, like, huge files. I can just deal with somewhat huge files. It'll be a little easier. A little easier for me to do that. Uh, but that's tomorrow night. That's not even tonight. Um, let's see. Um, what did I want to say? Uh, we have not done a um elon musk update in a bit there hasn't been like uh good good opportunities to dunk there's always an opportunity to dunk on elon musk but there hasn't been like a good one in a while there are un hmm, unconfirmed reports i have not been able to find like proof of this but there there was stuff going around this weekend that uh another one of elon musk alt accounts had been found uh he's like you know his accounts that agree with him um that are run by him uh and supposedly this is all again this is conjecture we don't know supposedly he had an account where he was using a voice changer to get into twitter spaces to defend himself again this is this is conjecture we don't have any evidence to support that it's a funny story but again i i can't i cannot confirm that based on you know uh reports i can tell you that uh there is a report that seems to be on the up and up uh, um, by uh, what are their what are their names um, by check C H E Q check. They're a cybersecurity firm uh, and they track bots. Uh, one of the things they do is they track bots and uh, uh, fake users, and they say uh, that the. 75.85% of traffic from X uh, uh, 
to its advertisers' websites during the weekend of the Super Bowl was fake. So that's people, uh, that's click-through, right? That's click-through of ads going to the site because Twitter made a big show of being like, hey, we, uh, Super Bowl was one of the biggest of ever on X, completely smashing key metrics from last year with impressions, user posts, and video view rising 31, 41, and 75% respectively year over year. Uh, with an epic overtime game delivering a huge surge in visibility engagement. Brands on X did blah, blah, blah. Uh, basically, they were like, we had like 10 billion impressions and lots of video views. And then Check was like, uh, the the uh, CEO of Check uh, was like, I've never seen anything even remotely close to 50%, not to mention 76%. I'm amazed. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen anything even remotely close. Um, so it is not. Um, it is not a uh, a scientific uh, sample. They do a sample. Um, uh, so it is, it is not, they don't see a lot of all of the relevant data. They only have so much information, but their, uh, their trends and their observations seem to hold weight within the industry. So it is, it's certainly valid to take a look at that. Lord Crash says, people on Twitter seem sure that Elon's block community notes from appearing on his posts. So his racist bullshit can go without, uh, fact checking available. Yes. Um, that is, yes, we don't have any proof of that. But there are certainly the belief that uh, community notes don't work on Elon's tweets. Uh, that does seem to be uh, the case. Uh, but again, we, we, don't, we don't know for sure. Um, uh you may you may have noticed if uh, I'm surprised the feature still exists at all. Honestly, yeah, uh, I honest I, I believe the community notes is a thing that they have to have in certain uh, regions of the world, and it's just easier to have it everywhere. Uh, but I believe it is it, it is a requirement in some parts of the world that Twitter does have to adhere to. Uh, I just knocked a piece over, and I don't know which one. Hold on. I heard a, I heard a peace fall. I got it. Here we go. Yeah. Um, this, this, uh, a, a few pieces have fallen off of this kit in, uh, off the sprues, probably due to shipping. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, also, uh, it's not super surprised when you, when you when you take into account just how many goddamn bots are on Twitter recently. Like uh, my tweets don't go viral, and I still get complete and utter nonsense. I still see so much garbage and link in bio and blank in bio stuff. Uh, I get a lot of it. Um, uh, the John Drake like mentioned a couple like you know like WWE and one other thing in League of Heels uh and the League of Heels got a lot of attention from bots which we don't normally get because we're not a super active account that that sees you know a lot of nonsense so we suddenly were getting a ton more and it was just like what is even happening why are they replying to this tweet uh uh, I was I was a little, you know, a little surprised, mainly because, like I said, I don't see a lot of that. My account does not see a lot of nonsense uh, to that degree. We do get some, certainly. I certainly do uh, see some uh, shenanigans, but uh, that was an exceptional level for a little while there. Yes, it's a meme. Yes, it's so it's so often that it's now a meme. Um Uh, basically, they were also like, uh, Check was also like, we were thinking of not publishing it, but it's just such a ridiculously high number, we felt we had to say something. 
It's like, yeah, yeah, I get it. All right, so this one, this is a rare thing here. I'm going to pop that in the top. Pop that in like that. Boom. Okay. We're working on the leg here. We're going to work on one leg and then we'll work on the uh, to other leg. So let's get that going here. Uh, uh, apparently, TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram are all at like 3%. Uh, two, two to 3%. Uh, and Instagram has the least am amount of fake activity. Uh, whereas Instagram, yeah, yeah. Whereas, yeah, X is just really bad. Um, but apparently, uh, fake traffic is up a, quite a bit year over year. And that's not a surprise. Like, that's not, this is not shocking information. The To the degree that it is, it is shocking. But the fact that it's there. It's not super surprising. Uh, apparently, having to pay for uh, a check mark did not stop people. What with that not having anything to do with bots at all? Apparently, that did not cause bots to suddenly go away. Weird, weird. I know. The thing that wasn't the thing that everyone said was not going to help at all. Uh, that was their one of their solutions turns out to not be one of their solutions weird it's it's so weird how that how that thing that everyone said was not going to help didn't help that's number 12 let's see that was 23 oh that's the wrong piece that's actually on me i need 25 and 24. Uh, for Elon, bots are just people that don't that don't agree with him. Uh, well, here's the thing, no, no, bot, bots are people that do agree with him. Um. Uh, no, that's Tony, you're thinking of Tony Khan. To Tony Khan, people that don't like AEW are bots. To Elon Musk, bots are part of the many people that agree with him. Because bots. Bots uh, uh, overwhelmingly like Elon Musk because they are chasing trends. I bet he gets so much goddamn garbage on uh, on Twitter from bots. Because why wouldn't he? Uh, all right. Okay, we got that going there. We'll get this going here. Um, one is over here. This is one, great. This is one here that goes on there. Uh, the, this kit is pretty straightforward. I haven't had much to say about it so far. There hasn't been anything that's like been super difficult. It's been a pretty, uh, straightforward build. So I've been like that. Uh, Elon thinks people that disagree with him are part of a paid operation. Yes, Sid, that is very true. But that's not necessarily bots. They he thinks it's or he thinks that the people that disagree with him are part of an organized effort. But those are real people who are banding together to say things they don't necessarily mean in order to hurt him. Because people who don't like Elon Musk are trying to destroy his website uh, and ruin it. That that, that uh, they have an agenda. Uh, and they're part of an organized, uh, uh, effort. Uh, I was thinking when he claimed bots were causing his polls to go the wrong way. Oh yeah. I think my follower count is at least 80% bots. Now I really need to set up a blue sky. Uh, Elon, yes, Elon is definitely a bot. Um, yeah, I mean, here's the thing about blue sky. Uh, it needs proper moderation. It really, it needs moderation by a moderation team, not by engineers. Um, it's fine. Every place has its problems. Um, uh, there is a meme going around on Mastodon, uh, that basically makes, you know, and it is a bit to the culture of Mastodon, but there is, there is a overwhelming belief that, uh, the, there is a problem with Mastodon in that, like, there are a lot of, uh, well, actually guys, 
every well actually guy you knew on Twitter is on Mastodon and they well they um actually or well actually each other. So there's now like a reply like it's like it's 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 in tongue in cheek, but it's also pretty true of just like there's a lot of people just being like, hey, here are the kind of replies I would like to my post. Uh, uh, you know, he, reply etiquette on Mastodon is like a popular topic. And again, part of that is tongue in cheek. Part of it is very true. And then Blue Sky just had Blue Sky is just like uh, when they opened it up to everybody, which is great. Um, it had an issue of now everybody is just like around and it feels a little too lawless and it feels like the people that are putting together are that is by design. And that's like, eh, no, no, you need, you need to hire people that are specialized in this. Um, Mastodon ended up being a honeypot for the will actually weirdos. Yes, because there is still a barrier to entry in mastodon and people people will say there isn't one but there is it is it's not imp like the idea that you have to uh that if when you're using mastodon and you go and follow someone who is not on your server or your fed whatever you want to call it you don't get to see their old messages like People have a brain disconnect with that. It's set up to be confusing by design. And it's weird. And people who are like, look at like, because again, we have to be clear about this. A lot of people are looking for the next Twitter because they hated a lot about Twitter, except for the part where you could reach out to people and everyone you knew was on there. And it was part of the conversation. The it, it was Facebook when you didn't want to use Facebook anymore because they kept adding more bullshit to Facebook and you just wanted the what's going on feed and you wanted to check in with people and you wanted to see what they were doing. Like the idea that there was going to be a, uh, you know, that that's why people have jumped. Like it's people who have tried Hive and that's why people have tried Blue Sky and people have tried Mastodon because at the end of the day, the thing they want is Twitter that isn't run by Elon Musk and like people can say they, that, you know, like, Oh, well we, we, you know, want better. It's like, yeah, I, I do want better. I would like, I would like blue sky to be better than uh, Twitter was, but I, I also would like to have a Twitter that I feel comfortable using. Uh, that would be great. Uh, I hate that. I use, I use, Twitter still, Blue Sky, and Mastodon, and I'm on co-host, which is mostly just because it's fun, and I don't follow a lot of people on co-host, and I don't, some days I don't even look at it uh, when I'm not, you know, promoting and stuff, uh, but like, there's just like a lot of, you know, I have to use a bunch of websites, and the most like click-throughs I get are on my posts are still on Twitter, which sucks. I wish we would all abandon it, but I also run a small business. Um, they can set up their own bubbles on Mastodon. Yes, yes. Uh, but no lawless line in the fun days of uh, <laughs> Cock Fridays. Show us your little ass post and the hell thread. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there has to be, there has to be, like blue sky can't be the wild west anymore. It just can't. Um, except for the part that Twitter three years ago was fun and ADHD is hell. Now it's a dead mill filled with weird kiosks selling me garbage. Yes. Social media is always trying to build the next mall to everyone to hang out at. Well, stuffy. That's the thing, right? They, they, people were like, obviously, obviously people were looking for their, uh, Twitter killer, right? That's always the case in, in social media and everything, right? Uh, the thing that's popular, you try to do the thing that's popular as an alternative. You want your alternative to whatever, right? That That's not a surprise. 
that someone that that was the thing right and now it's the replacement for twitter it's not the twitter killer anymore because twitter killed twitter so now it's the replacement for it uh but people like what they people want the same things that they wanted like facebook one of the appeals of facebook was well myspace is dead so facebook is the new myspace that's great myspace was the new friendster that's great twitter was the new facebook that's great there's no new Twitter yet. And the belief in some people is they won't be because the internet has been ruined so much uh, that there can't end up being another one and maybe there shouldn't be another one. And I understand what people are saying with all of that, but also I liked having a place where I could just message my friends. Uh, I just liked that. Uh, give it to the folks that still are, uh, have a hive social. I have like three. Yeah. Twitter is mainly for corporates and people with networks. So Twitter is still a place that people go and read stuff, right? Obviously there's a lot of bots, but like there are, there are still people that use Twitter. There are still people that post photos of their pets on Twitter and they write to their friends and they have little groups and they have private accounts where they vent and they, try to sell their books and promote their Kickstarters. And it's just, there's so much noise on there where there used to be way more people who were just reading and following along and seeing what's up. And that went away, but there are still people using Twitter and the other sites have it like taken a foothold. It's just that now people are on other websites complaining about how Twitter sucks. And that's the, that, that's the big thing. I, I love reading on Twitter, people saying, I hate this other site because all people do is complain about Twitter. And it's like, that's every website, everywhere, every site complains about Twitter. Trending hashtags are just a complete mess full of accounts I've already blocked. I mean, oh, oh, I don't, I don't know what hashtags are. Couldn't be me. I use a, uh, I don't see hashtags because uh wh which one do i use right now uh let me see what's the name uh i use control panel for twitter uh i use the extension control panel for twitter so i don't see uh the for you i don't i only see following in chronological order um i don't see tweets uh quoting accounts that i've blocked or muted um i can uh i can mute specific tweets um, I can hide who to follow. I can hide, follow some topics, uh, excel, all, all those things. Um, I can hide views under tweets. So I don't see those. And I've also restored headlines on a, under external links, uh, and restored quote tweets under tweets and restored other links under tweets. Uh, and I hide Twitter blue upsells and subscriptions. Uh, also fast blocking. Control panel for Twitter is a good uh, app that I recommend you use. But I don't see, uh, hey, Dirty. But yeah, I don't see trending topics and I don't see hashtag nonsense. Uh, I choose not to see those things because I am trying to use Twitter for my own personal use and work use uh crazy says i've pretty much given up on twitter and switching to instagram plus their uh shorts uh short videos are tailored to my likes yeah right yeah i mean like i understand using instagram uh i hey in this conversation i have not mentioned threads because someday i might use threads i might use threads someday i i don't want to rule it out entirely but it d did not feel like a social media uh, platform that I needed to give any time or attention or energy to uh, because it's half-baked and not done. And at some point, threads might get done and it might make sense to be on threads. And the pre pre it, I might need to also include threads when I'm promoting my streams and such. Uh, but right now, it did not feel like a social media platform that I need to spend any time with. And in fact, I'm sometimes annoyed when I'm on Instagram doing something and 
uh, they want me to go read a thread. And they're like, hey, what about the, the, you might be interested in this thread. It's relevant to the things you're talking about. And it's like, one, it's definitely not. And two, stop trying to make threads happen. Anyway, we should just all go back to Orku. Uh, should all go back to Google's first social media site. Uh, I'm sure that uh, I think that's I think that's the real solution to to our problem. Just all get in on it. Get back. Bring it back. Uh, I think that I think that's all we need to do. Smoke signals. Yeah. I mean, uh, here's the thing, right? Honestly, I'm in a couple discords and they're pretty great. And I hate, look, I fucking hate saying that. I don't like saying that my, my uh, solution, uh, I'm going to allow that. I should just go back to adopt land file. He could finger me. Yes. Um, I don't like saying that a possible solution to this is discords because I hate how discord has the one place discord should not, uh, should not replace is wikis, uh, in or, or facts like FAQs should, you, you should not be like for more information, visit our wiki or visit our discord. It's like, no, that is not the way to present information. But for, as far as communities go, Discords are the closest thing to BBSs that, and I miss that. Um, I'm in a couple very small uh, discords that I like a lot. Obviously, my Discord, uh, but also I'm in some other discords, and those are fun to check out and converse with people uh, and uh, and get into arguments on occasion. Uh, and I'm in a couple big ones that I do for you know uh, for for helping out and as a moderator and I kind of keep to my topics, but like, I don't know. Discord ain't bad as a replacement for the conversations I was getting into on Twitter. There's a barrier to entry in a lot of them. And I don't love that. Their apps, uh, uh, discord seems to be as a company philosophy. Uh, they just try to make their whole experience worse and worse and worse. They seem, um, determined to ruining anything that they've got going and it's very weird uh but they seem just determined to become more uh at the price of ruining what they can do and what they are uh, and it's it shouldn't be too surprising because that's how businesses run unfortunately but it is annoying it's annoying it's more annoying than shocking that they're just like hell bet on fucking everything up for themselves uh I like the part of Twitter where Nintendo tried to start a thread of images of Mario throwing things and stop at two posts. Yeah. Yeah. I think, biz, I think, um, people need to stop trying to engage on Twitter. Cause it's a uh, worthless brands should just give up uh, engagement. Just be a, be a place to promote and, uh, don't try to engage. Cause it's just, we broke poor Elmo. Um, I made a disco server and it's great. Uh, but then again, it's for uh, Emerald City Comic Con. Yeah, that makes sense. It's your Emerald City Comic Con, you know, and it's like people that, you know, small community. I'm in a um, model kit crafting, uh, model kit and crafting uh, uh, Discord. And that place is awesome for trading tips and showing off builds and showing cool memes uh, and bad memes and discussion. Uh, and promoting, uh, and I've checked out a few streams because of that, and I've been really happy on that. Uh, so I've been in a few general interest ones, um, and then yeah, and then I got the ones that I'm attached to. Uh, Discord is bad for finding general solutions to tech problems on the internet. Yes, Lord Crash did. Yeah, like the if you are if you are trying to find a solution to something, and there is not a tutorial on YouTube, you are pretty much fucked. Uh, or a page on iFixit, you are pretty boned. Uh, if, if people are telling you to go to a Discord, that's a nightmare. Uh, now, if you are in a Discord and there is a sub channel about the thing and you can ask for advice, that can be fucking fantastic. Uh, but that's those are a lot of ifs. Um, the search feature update made it worse. Uh, the There's an update there on the... Um, 
what is it now? Oh, uh, photos are its own button now. If you want to upload photos in a in a thread or a post, instead instead of like files in the file or whatever, it's now its own button. And I keep fucking that up. And it was like it's not a big change, but it's like a UI change that like who was who was fuck who was that hurting? Who was that messing with? What what are we doing? It just feels like a lot of their changes are to make Discord worse. Uh, I, I refuse to figure out what roles are about in some discords I'm in. Most roles are to select which channels you may be interested in. Yes. Um, yeah. So uh, roles often are like, like um, I have a sub channel on my discord that uh, you have to have the role of a patron to be in there. Uh, it is a Patreon reward is that you have a, a little private area on my um, discord that no one uses. Don't worry about it. No one ever uses it. But I have it as a, as, a, as, a, as a bonus for being on the Patreon. So anyone who's, who's been, who's, you know, been on the Patreon has access to that. Uh, that's their role. Um, and for me, that's a good way to organize and I can look up people and see all that. I don't color code and do all that. Some people do that. So you can see like, oh, this person is tier one on Patreon or whatever. Or this person is tier uh two and you can see that or that's a mod or like one of the discords i'm on uh i was part of a charity event so i have a different color than some other people because i was part of the event and it's like okay we finished the leg by the way we're gonna move on to the other leg we got we got a leg done uh and one sticker that was pretty easy to apply pretty straightforward uh you know this is a big white uh leg here so there's lots of spots for panel lining and it looks pretty good um so yeah i mean like like discord is not the solution to twitter the the thing is one there is a uh, a valid case for there should not be a replacement for twitter there should be a bunch of other small places because it because it should not have become the default public square uh uh it you know it, it became too big and it became too important for what it was uh, which I can understand. I can appreciate that line uh, of thinking, uh, that belief. I, I totally get it. Um, my take on that is, yeah, but I have things to promote. Like at one point I had 7,000 uh, uh, people you know, following me. I think I'm at 6,000 something now. Like it was a place where people who were interested in what I had to say, like my click through for, for streams from Twitter is awful now. And it, what used to be better, my, the, the streams is tough because people now know my schedule and some people don't even like, like the idea of my go live link, like people don't click on that go live link, but they may have seen one of my other tweets that day about my stream. Cause I, that that's the, the impressions still seem to be pretty good for that. Um, now, one thing people don't do anymore that they used to do on my uh, uh, on Twitter is click through to my videos. Holy shit. I do not get click throughs on videos. I do not get people watching my videos in Twitch. And I do not get people clicking through my videos to see what what's up and what I'm up to. Like that just doesn't happen anymore. It just doesn't happen. Uh, it used to and it doesn't anymore. Um my YouTube views are almost exclusively th from YouTube. Some of them are because people from my Patreon. There is there is a uh, a notable amount of people that that click on stuff through my Patreon. Uh, so thank you to, to people that do that. Uh, it's very kind of you. Um, but like, there's just a pretty damn consistent amount of people that just that only see stuff because they uh, get recommended on YouTube or because they click through uh, um, uh, the subscriptions because they subscribe and see it. Um, but there's just not a lot of people who uh, who see my links on Twitter, my uh, video links, and are like, oh, I'm going to watch that there. Uh, thank you to the people that, hey, Nathan, welcome, that see my streams. During my streams, you're watching here that click the links. When I share my YouTube videos or more to the point, my Kuma Bear videos, that that's the jump there has been pretty good. Uh, Cause I can see that people are clicking through from Twitch 
and at least opening it up. And that's very good. That's cool. Uh, but also, my shorts data is is looking good. I made uh, I made a dollar in January, uh, almost exclusively because of uh, um, YouTube uh, uh, shorts from Kuma Bear, and also because yeah, because that doesn't even count the video that I put up this month, which my numbers are going to be higher for February. But my numbers for January were high, and I, I know you might be thinking like. Pat, you just said that was a dollar. That's that's not good. Yes, you're right. I don't make money on YouTube. My videos don't make money. The idea that one of my video, you know, that some of my shorts have made some amount of money. Also consider that those that, that my shorts are four videos, four videos that are under a minute made me a dollar. It's pretty good. Small tip. Yeah, but I'm saying like, my 20 minute videos don't make me any money. Uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club doesn't make me much money at all. But YouTube shorts are a minute or, or less than a minute. And four of those made me a dollar in January. And again, I have that Bobby Lashley uh, a WW2K23 video that is not is less than a month old. Uh, and that might make me a couple dollars just on that video. Uh, so, uh, and the real thing is, and I should say this, I, I should say, it, I don't make YouTube videos to make money. That is not a uh, supplemental income for me. I'm not, I'm not in the game. In, I'm not in that game to make money. Uh, YouTube exists for two, my YouTube exists for two reasons. The first is, creativity i am desperate to create things i started doing my weekly series uh because i was desperate to push myself creatively and make something happen and make things it was improv it was uh working on editing it was uh the yearly project and coming up with a new idea every year Papier's anime club came because I had a desire to talk about anime. That was a thing I wanted to do. I wanted to do some long form video. I didn't, I, I want to do talking head long form uh, because I was very interested in seeing how that would work out. And I've been very pleased with, with doing that and having a creative outlet. Uh, and the other thing is it's, it's the hope that someone sees it and wants to check out what I do right? They follow, I want them to follow up, subscribe so they can find out, see more videos. I want them to check out a stream. I want them to follow me on a social media platform. I would like them to decide to join my Patreon or subscribe here on Twitch or watch streams on Twitch, right? Uh, to, if I put up a GoFundMe to seriously consider taking a look at it, you know, like, the, those things are, they're not great, but they are things that I'm, you know, putting out there because I, I want more people to see what I do and check out what I do. So like YouTube isn't, a, YouTube is not an ad, it's not a, a, a revenue source for me, like Patreon and Twitch are, which of course go back into model kits. And again, Sometime next month, I'm going to hit $100 on my YouTube AdSense, and I'm going to be able to, that's the minimum, to withdraw. And I'm going to be able to withdraw money from YouTube. And when I withdraw money from YouTube, that $100 is going to go buy a bunch of model kits. I'm going to make some purchases because that that part of it, it that, you know, all of that goes back into this. Um, I should say... I had a good year of on Twitch as far as subscriptions, gifted subs, um, uh, bits, and, and you know all that. I had a good year in 2023. Um, I did all my taxes. I owe the federal government some money because of one of my jobs. Uh, it's specifically because of the job I did. I did today that job. My customer service, my contract customer service, where they take out taxes but they didn't take out enough taxes. And I, and 
I knew they weren't going to take out enough taxes. I'm prepared for this. But yeah, I owe the federal government a little bit of money. And that's annoying. But here's the thing. Me owing the federal government a little bit of money, considering how little money I actually make on paper, that that that's something where I'm like, yeah, all right. You know what actually fucking grinds my gears? You know what gets me, make, make, makes me annoyed? I have to pay $14 to tell the state of South Carolina that I don't owe them any money and they don't owe me any money. That pisses me off. It should not cost me $14 to tell the state of South Carolina, hey, we're even. That sucks. I hate that. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's cool or good. Uh, I think it sucks. I don't think I should have to spend that kind of money when I did. I think there should be a minimum where you either owe. I think if you owe the state money, you should not have to pay to file. And I think if you are getting money back, it is fine to pay them. But I don't think it should cost me $14 to just say, hey, we're good. That sucks. I don't like that. Uh, I'm not, I'm just not a fan of that shit. Just not a fan of it. Uh, I think it sucks. Uh, how are they going to get one over on you? Yeah, it should scale how much income you're reporting. Yes, I agree. It's not going to do that. Uh, you shouldn't ever have to pay to file for federal lease. Yes, nothing. True, right? I owe the federal government a little bit of money. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. No problem at all. I owe them a little bit of money. I get that. Uh, I wish that the company that I worked for had taken out more money so that I didn't owe money on that. That's fine. I understand. Um, it, 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 I don't like it, but I understand and I get it. I owe them some money. It did not cost me any money to file. I'm not, you know, that is not a problem. Uh, 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 federal government is testing out some stuff and all that. Uh, I've been... Uh, 1099 the last few years and that's a amorphous chaos blob that seems to change every year yeah i mean like look also i i, I said i mentioned this uh uh to uh i was talking to my mom yesterday uh humble brag i know and uh and uh she was like you don't make a lot of money though it it, it sucks that you're you're getting hit and i'm like yeah i also definitely hmm I have to choose my words carefully here. A few years ago, maybe maybe 10 years ago, uh, a, a woman was taking improv classes where I used to work and I um, coached her improv group and it was a good gig. She was uh, a early retirement. She was in early retirement. She was in her uh, 50s and she was finally, you know, she was retired. Her husband was still working and she was making a bunch of money. She had a bunch of money and she was just like, I want to do comedy. I've wished I could do comedy my whole life. I want to do comedy. So she's taking improv classes. You know what? To her credit, funny lady. Picked that up right away. Knew what she was doing. Was great. Uh, she offered her husband uh, as pro bono work. Uh, I took him out for coffee to meet with a bunch of improvisers to talk to them about taxes because he worked, he made a lot of money telling very rich people how not to pay as much taxes as they were paying. Right. And he worked in entertainment and he looked at my tax returns and he understood my job. And he was like, okay, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that thing. Okay. You do this, thing. you should be. And a lot of what, I did there was legal and should have and would have held up under scrutiny. Also, it's over three years since all of this. So it, it's a little moot. And also a lot of those things that I did, uh, I can't do anymore because the laws have changed and how it works has changed. So some of those things are moot anyway. But I will say that there were years where when when I did my tax returns, I got some fucking money back. I was doing 
pretty good on getting some goddamn money back. Uh, I was doing like, you know, oh, this trip to PAX this year is paid for. Like, you know, it's like, oh, my return's going to come in the summer. My trip to, to uh, PAX uh, West in, in the fall, that's taken care of. That's my tax return. I'm good. Like, I did fucking good uh, on my returns for many years. Again, because I had information from a rep reputable source about ways that I could uh, look out for myself uh, that, that now don't really exist anymore, but at the time existed and were fine. But it was just like deductions of things. It was... Well, that's the business. That's a business expense. Well, is that a business? Is it a business expense? Oh, you took that train to to Philadelphia for wrestling, right? Well, you do a comedy show where you produce that's a, a wrestling comedy show, right? Yeah. So that trip to go see wrestling was a business expense. That was research. Okay, sure. All right. Yeah, that train ride was research. Okay, sure. We'll deduct that. Oh, this thing. Oh, yeah, that's that. Oh, you like. Okay, well, what's your costume budget? And it's like, what? You know, like all of that stuff. Um, uh, it, it was, it was, I did, again, as I said, it was years ago. It was outside of uh, situations. A lot of those rules don't exist anymore. But there was a time where I did pretty damn well for myself when it comes to that. So I, it may be karma right now that I owe money. I owe the federal government a small amount of money, which unfortunately means a lot to me because that money could have gone to something else. Comic-Con is what I use my tax returns for. Just pay for tickets and autographs and I'm set. There you go. Hell yeah. If you can do it, great. Um, either you loan more money to the government than you need or you pay them uh, for not loaning them enough money yeah that i mean that really is what it is right like um one of my jobs didn't take out enough money uh didn't loan the federal government enough money so now i have to give them money um because my other job took out some money and that helped and then I don't make enough on Patreon to have to do anything because I'm under the I'm under the uh, the amount because actually that increased, which is great uh, because I was getting close to the amount where I had to worry about that. And then um, streaming is my small is my uh, hey I, I I have a small business uh, of streaming because that is the best way to do this, but a pair. <laughs> Um, equipment I can deduct, but, um, I was told explicitly by my accountant, uh, the last time we talked, which was a couple years ago, if you, if you try to deduct all of the model kits that you buy, you will get audited because that will be, that number will be too high. Uh, and again, that was a couple years ago, but. I have not. And now things are a little different in that regard anyway. But yes, I was explicitly told, Pat, do not try to deduct your model kits as a business expense. Those, uh, just, those are just personal gifts to yourself. And I was like, okay. All right. I'll believe you. Um, someday I will make enough money streaming that I will, I will be able to do that. But I don't make enough streaming to justify, uh, to to uh, have that not be a big red flag, which is fun. Uh, I know this isn't talk to a professional, uh, to a tax professional hour, but do people deduct gaming rigs? I mean, I did. Uh, when I bought this computer in 2022, I it is that, that this computer is a business expense because. Uh, over 50% of its use is for my small business and also my other jobs. Uh, this, this computer is that my laptop is my laptop is a business expense. And I, and, uh, so I also wrote that off and that has a depreciating value every year. Um, uh, my laptop is a hundred percent because I, I never use it for anything else. I have designated that as a just for work 
because it is generally when I want to be in a different room. And that's usually what I want to work out of the porch uh, uh, for data entry and stuff like that. Or when I'm traveling, which I don't travel much anymore. But when I'm traveling, it, it, you know, it's it usually the laptop is for, for business. But yeah, so uh, streamers definitely do that. Uh, they definitely uh, try to, oh, the, the router, uh, my router that I got this year uh, that I just spent a bunch of money for, that's a business expense. I need a new router for work. Um, it, I don't get much for it. It's mostly just to keep that in line. And also it's a nice little paper trail for insurance in case, in case my computer fucking, uh, gets stolen or some shit. I can say when we talk to the house insurance, yeah, I need this amount of money. You can see it here in this tax form, right? You can see all that. And I don't have to just have to send them the email of all of the parts or whatever. Um, but yeah. Uh, I am by no means an expert. Uh, so don't, so take a lot of what I'm saying here with a grain of salt. Of course, uh, your mileage may vary, yada, yada, yada. But yeah, I mean, you know, um, the stuff that is under a certain, like, uh, at this point, my overhead camera, which cost me at the time $600. Thank you very much. Is now not worth anything. Um, uh, it's now depreciated in value so much that it's not worth anything. But when I bought it, it was a business expense because I bought it for videotaping, uh, uh, stuff, uh, and out there, um, my webcam, uh, one of my webcams, my work paid for the other one I paid for. And then I put that through and that's now depreciated in value, um, but yeah, my computer is still is still a business expense. And you have to, you know, I have to declare that I'm using it, you know, mostly for I use the I, I say that I use my computer 50-50, and that's honestly probably true that I do use it about 50-50. Um, if I was smart, I would have something that is a hundred percent just for work, because it would be nice to just have a computer that was just for streaming, but that's kind of a pipe dream for me right now is to have something I could dedicate just to that. Uh it also, you know, has its own sets of issues. Having a computer that I could, uh, that could be my gaming rig that then would go to my capture rig would probably be better uh, than what I'm doing now, which is to run everything off the same and have three monitors and just go that way. It would probably be better, but that's not that's not happening anytime soon. Um, before we take our pause for the cause and I talk about ways you can support the channel and go through all that nonsense, I just will say... Uh, programming notes next Tuesday stream, uh, you know, my bonus gaming streams, uh, and, and, and other, uh, originally next Tuesday was going to be Mars first logistics. Cause I really like that game. I, you know, and, uh, I haven't done all of the, uh, there was an update last year. I haven't done all the content in the update. So I was like, Oh, I should get, I should play that again. Um, and just kind of get in there. Uh, that's going to get postponed. I don't know when we'll do it. That's being postponed because, uh, next Tuesday will be the release of the next DLC for Power Wash Simulator, Warhammer Forty Thousand. We're gonna we're gonna power wash some mechs, uh, some mechs and some tanks and uh, and whatever uh, for the Empire for the Emperor. Uh, uh, that's gonna be next Tuesday because that is release day, so it should be out by the time we stream. Um, I don't think the price for that went up yet uh, on Steam. Um, I imagine it'll be $20 because that's usually, I believe, what their DLC has been. Uh, their paid DLC has been, I believe, about $20. Uh, that game does have fun DLC. You're right. I'm, I'm looking. Uh, I'm going to look at Steam right now here. Uh, library. Power Wash Simulator. Uh... Coming February 27th, it's got a trailer. It does not have the price here because it's a special pack, so it should cost money. Some of their DLC doesn't cost money. This one should. Has it shown up on the DLC page yet? It has not shown up on the DLC page yet. Oh, maybe, maybe it won't be $20. Usually $8. You're right, Lord Crashton. I don't know why I said it was $20. Uh... The Back to the Future was eight dollars, 
And so that's, uh, and Bikini Bottom was $8. So considering those are both $8, then it's probably $8 for that, which is fine. Um, the, the, some of the packs, the smaller packs were free because that was part of uh, Square Enix being the publisher of, of the game. Uh, those were like tie-ins. That was part of the deal. It's $8. Great. That's what I assumed. I don't know. 20 I don't know why 20 was in my head. But um, so that'll be next Tuesday. Yes. Um. I'm not super familiar with Warhammer. I mean, I played Space Marine. I think Space Marine's cool as hell. Uh, but I'm not super familiar with the lore of uh, of uh, Warhammer 40,000. I do know that it's 40,000 and not 40K. Um, but also, I don't care if people say 40K. I'm not like that. But I do, I do try to say 40,000 because supposedly I'm supposed to say 40,000. Uh, we finished the legs here. We gotta work on the uh, the waist next, so that we can start putting this thing together, get this kit body complete. Uh, we got the waist, and we got the weapons and the shield left. We're gonna finish this kit up definitely on Thursday. Uh, seems like a spiritual follow up to the Final Fantasy VII DLC. Yes, it feels in line with that. Um, uh, before we get into uh, getting body complete on this kit, now is the part of the stream where I'm gonna talk to you, friends, about ways that you can support what I do here. Um, so everything I want to talk to you about now is optional. You're under no obligation to do any of the things that I'm about to mention here. Sorry, I was looking at something and we're good. Okay, great. So all this is optional. I want to make that clear because I do the pause for the cause, uh, during every stream where I try to convince you to, uh, uh, help me out here financially, but don't feel like you have to, right? It fucking times are tough out there, friends. And this is just the thing that I do. And it honestly, I get so much out of doing this, having these uh, streams, uh, having making fun model kits, having a good conversation with people. Um, I love it. And if no one was follow, if no one was subscribing, I would still probably do it. I would probably wouldn't do it as often. But if there, if I had like 10 subscribers, I would probably just do it once a week, but I would still fucking do it. Uh, if you haven't followed already, hit the follow button. Uh, that way you know when I'm going live and you can get the little notification and, and do all that. Uh, if you want to subscribe, uh, if you are a subscriber, you can throw the Bear Cave leg of the site, the tier two blue emote in chat. Being a subscriber is the easiest way to support what I do here through cash money or your Prime gaming token. If, if, if you have Amazon Prime, you get that token because you linked it with Twitch. You can use it on somebody. Why not use it on me? We're currently at 71 subscribers, which is a lot of fucking subscribers. It's pretty goddamn good. Uh, I feel blessed. Uh, some of those are gifted subs from the subathon or people who subscribed that might not continue to subscribe, which is understandable. And I get it. Uh, we'll find out uh, at the end of this month or the beginning of March. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, uh, subscribing is the easiest way to support what I do here through cash money, your prime gaming token. Uh, you could gift a sub. You could be like Bobby Dice Roller and gift a sub to somebody in the community. You could be like Harold and top the cheer leaderboard and cheer a little bit of uh, a little bit of business there. Those are those are ways to support me here through Twitch. There are other ways, and again, optional, understandable if this is not your jam, uh, because I don't, you don't owe me anything. I appreciate you being here. You don't owe me anything. I got a Patreon at patreon.com slash Pat Bear. There's a $1, $3, $5, and $10 tier. There are different rewards for the different tiers. Consider joining me on Patreon. It would be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we got that. We got that. Uh, YouTube. We, we, got a, we got a YouTube channel at youtube.com uh, slash Pat Bear. You can jump me over there uh, and check that out. Subscribing on YouTube is free. If you want to become a member for $2 a month, you get my Wednesday videos on Tuesday. So if you jumped in on the membership on my YouTube today, then tomorrow morning, you would, because I, I gotta, I'm gotta i getting up earlier than I would like to tomorrow, but tomorrow morning when I get up, you will receive my next Kuma Bear video. And the next Kuma Bear videos, pretty good. Because uh, uh, I recorded it already, so I can tell you it's pretty good. Um, so that's one way you go to the YouTube, you go do that, you do that. Okay. Um, 
Those are monthly ways to support me. You can also do a one-time donation if you just want to help me out so that I can keep doing cool shit. Uh, you can go to my coffee or uh, directly through my PayPal. And everything I make through direct donations through YouTube, which includes AdSense. So watching my videos helps me out. Like I said, I'm so close to getting $100 uh, uh, where I can then actually withdraw all that money, which would be great. Um, through Twitch and through Patreon, all goes into a fund and I buy model kits with that. I saw this Gundam Age kit for a good price and I went, I want that normal. I want the normal high grade. I'm getting that normal. Um, so past you helped present me and present you could help future me. Um, after this, I'm going to be working on the double X because it won a pole or tied a pole. So I'm going to work on the double X high grade from Gundam X because we haven't done a Gundam X in a long time because some of those high grades uh, never got a reissue and are hard to find. This one did get a reissue, so it's not that hard to find. Um, but uh, I know what I'm building next, but there's a way to make it so that the thing I do after that is your decision. You can choose what I build soon by going to my Amazon wish list and buying a model kit because uh, it jumps the queue, becomes the next thing I build. I'll make a dedicated video about the thing that you have purchased. Uh, that's the least I could do. And I recently updated there. There's some Lego sets, some inexpensive sets, some expensive stuff. Um, uh, there's some model kits, uh, inexpensive model kits, very expensive model kits. I, I mentioned this on Saturday. I recently added the Gundam Amazing Red Warrior, which is a very cool looking kit that I would love to build. Um, uh, but yeah, I've got a bunch of different stuff on there, uh, including the, um, the Build Metaverse kit the plutine gundam from gundam build metaverse which is uh they're the new it's a new kit it's like very new um that has like it's got a scythe it's not a it's like a scythe axe it's not a death scythe but it's got strong death scythe energy to it um it's like armor for a core uh in the build series um uh but also the scythe can become a lance. It's got, like I said, it's got death scythe energy and I would like to build it. Um, uh, that's on my wish list. There's a bunch of things on there. Um, uh, inexpensive kits, expensive kits, stuff that's always on sale. Gear, because maybe you just want to support me and buy some gear for me to have. That would be nice. Um, I have an alternative to Amazon, which is my throne wish list, which I keep saying I'm going to update. I will update that soon. Uh, and then also, you can always go to USA Gundam Store, buy a gift card. You get an email with your gift card code. Send me a DM on Twitter or whisper here on Twitch with that gift card code. And I will use that gift card code to buy something from USA Gundam Store. And you can also make a suggestion if you're like, Pat, you should build this. I certainly could. Um, let's see. What is next? What is next? Uh, if you want to support me and not spend any money, join my Discord. We talked about tonight. I have a Discord. It's a nice little place. You're welcome to join the Discord. A couple of video links for you to peruse. Pat Bear's Anime Club. Uh, the current Pat Bear's Anime Club video is my... I used data and also my own subjective opinion to answer the question, have the Crunchyroll Awards ever gotten it right? Have they ever been right about anime of the year? And I provide evidence to say maybe. And I look and see like what didn't get nominated and all that. And that all stems from the fact that uh, the awards that are coming out next month, anime of the year for 2023, which will be the 24 awards, uh, which Mercury is not nominated. So it's bullshit. Uh, and that led me to go, what else can I talk about there? Um, all right. Also, Kuma Bear. My weekly anime recommendation series. This week, I talked about Otakoi, Love is Hard for Otaku, uh, which is a lovely series about uh, childhood friends who are now co-workers who are trying to figure out what, it, like how it works to date someone that you're not hiding a secret from, your otakuness. Like, what's it like dating someone that you can be free to talk about? your hobbies and your weird obsessions like what uh it's lovely lovely series you should check it out watch my under a minute video trying to entice you to check that to check out that series um we are now 
we're still in the February me talking about romance. All February videos are me talking about romance. I got another one that's coming out again on Wednesday. Um, but people watch that early, uh, as I said. Uh, all right. I have a manga to talk about because it's Manga Monday. And then I will talk about some anime. But we'll start with manga and then jump over to anime. But before I do that, I am required by law to drink water because I'm in desperate need of it. Uh, got my, you know, like filled out my taxes and it said drink water, Pat, at shortly after 10 p.m. at every stream. So I got to. And we're going to dramatically transition back to the overhead where we will work on the waste of this kit. And I will talk to you about a manga and then some anime right now. <sighs> All right. Let me tell you, as I start working on this waste, about Nature Mag uh, Mage Ashto's slow life in an abandoned forest. Um, so God, there's, there's things about this that like are weird to say, uh, we'll get into it. Um, so first and foremost, uh, who believes the government telling them water is good for you? I mean, yeah. Right. Um, so first thing about this series that you got to know is it is a banished. It's a banished kicked banished slash kicked. It's one of those. It is a guy who stop me if you heard don't stop me if you've heard this before he is uh his abilities are misunderstood and that's not actually fair um his abilities are great except that he's the second son of a prominent military family he's a noble he's the second son his his older brother high ranking his younger sister he's a genius and fantastic and he is the disappointment. Good guy, good family person, just smart as hell, but he's got a rare magic ability. His trait is is that is nature magic. So he's like he's like, well, the best I can do is become an herbologist. I'll get a doctorate. I'll go into school. I can do teaching. I can work in health. And just live in the shadow of my more successful family. And he envisions a world where, you know, he kind of pushes himself away from his siblings because he's sure he's a disappointment and it, it he's proud of them, but it's hard. Uh, and he envisions a world where he, he and his childhood best friend, maybe they'll get married or they'll always be together. And she's the second daughter. Her older sister is incredibly powerful and she's a big disappointment too. And they have a bond. So he's like, well, maybe we'll just, you know, grow old together. Uh, you know, he's like, I, I don't want a grand life, but it'll be something. Uh, you know, when, I, when I'm 18, I'll be an herbologist and I'll be able to, to have this life. Uh, and then his father uh, fucks all that up. Because his father's like, hey, uh, your brother is going to get uh, your brother. We, I set up an arranged marriage. It's uh, the second daughter of that family and your brother. Which doesn't make any sense. And later we find out nobody wants. And it's clearly this is uh, this is on purpose. It's his father is trying to get rid of him because. The only response that he can give it, our guy Ashto uh, can give is, well, I'd like to give up my family, the family name then. I can't, because the one thing he can't do is just hang out and watch his childhood sweetheart marry his brother. Like, he's just like, not going to do that. He's just not going to let that happen to himself. Uh, so his father is like, well, all right, well, I'm going to put you in charge of this forest that we are supposed to be monitoring and we don't really do uh, it. And, you know, it's dangerous, but, you know, hey, your abilities with plants or whatever will be great for that. So our guy has some rations. He's got a little bit of money and he goes off basically pretty much left for dead. I should say 
his uh, younger sister and older brother are fucking pissed about this shit. His childhood sweetheart also pissed about this shit because, hey, weirdly enough, uh, the older brother is in love with the older sister over there. Uh, uh, you know, like their childhood sweethearts and coworkers. And he's like, I'm not going to marry my subordinates younger sister who's in love with my brother. What are you talking about? Like what? So it does definitely doesn't go the way the father intended, but our guy does leave. And I should say he's not an overpowered main character. This kicking is because he's, he's different, right? And he is thriving. He makes a, a, a shelter. He makes a contract with a small, um, uh, he believes to be a small forest spirit. Uh, that embodies like a, he names wood that embodies a little uh, a golem. Uh, and so he's got someone to talk to or talk at at least. And, you know, he's going to do OK. And that's where the slow life uh, comes in, because and you may have seen this coming. Uh, everything works out pretty fucking easy, pretty immediately. Like chapter two he meets a high elf which people didn't know were like around she's looking for a place to hang out because she's been kicked out for a, a couple thousand years she's been kicked out of her home because she stole a bunch of wine from the uh the elf that you know that is the mayor so she has to go and leave for a while so she's like i'd love to stay here uh there are there are some uh ancient dwarves that are nearby and hurt and the herbologist like helps. And, and I love these dudes because I love their, their thought. They're like, Hey, you saved our lives. We're going to hang out until you die because you're a human and you're going to die at some point pretty soon to us because we're ancient dwarves and we will live for a really long time. So we're just going to like watch over you until you kick the bucket. And then we'll like go do other stuff. Because whatever, this is our... So basically, it's just a vacation. And they're like, and while we're here, let's make some good homes for us to live in. And hey, you have a nature affinity, right? Could you grow some uh, barley and hops and grapes? Uh, and because he's good at that, other high elves show up who are apparently bored. A lot of the high elves are just bored. They show up. Uh, there are some ogres who come that are desperate for a place to live and they're like we heard a rumor that you accept uh uh outcasts and he's like where did you hear that rumor and that is a recurring gag that i really like in this manga where that happens multiple times because there's other people that they're like dog humans that show up that are like i don't know we heard that this was a, a place where you could come if you were kicked out and he's just like who keeps telling people that um but you know he's still like yeah sure all right uh if you're like, Pat, this doesn't sound like it's horny. And it's not super horny. There are cat maids. There are cat girl maids. There's a whole group of, of maids that show up because according... I didn't make this up. I'm just telling you what the, the story is. But according to the lore, cat maids are, are only powerful if they have a master. If they're on their own, they're weak. And they can only use their full abilities of their strength if they have someone that is their boss. So they're looking for a master. And he's like, I guess that's me. All right, sure. Um, the younger sister, uh, I walked in a weird time. Uh, yeah, uh, Radimus. I'm talking about a manga. Uh, it's called uh, Nature Mages, uh, Nature Mage Ashto's Slow Life in an Abandoned Forest. Um. It, it's fine. Um, uh, does anybody else show up? Oh, I forgot to talk about the dragon. There's a dragon. Um, uh, there is an ancient dragon that was sleeping. And our main dude using nature's magic. Um, he, uh, She shows up in a human form. But she's definitely a dragon. She shows up and she's like, hey, you've been using magic. That's cool. Oh, you, you hey, you have a nature affinity like me. Neat. I'm going to make I'm going to make a contract. So you have a lot of magic powers. So remember where I said that the main character of the story uh did wasn't an overpowered main character. He is now. 
he he wasn't at the beginning. He does become one. He is now an overpowered main character. He has an abundance of magic. He can grow a bunch of things. Uh, there are no there. The one thing this show does not have is a friendly uh, slime or a um. So there, there's no like slime friend or uh. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Now this is the wrong piece. These the this is not sliding into here as it should. I don't. Okay, so I did. One of the one of these is wrong. Either these are wrong, or this is wrong, and I'm gonna see. Uh, that's that would be B twenty two and twenty one. Is that what these are? No, that's nineteen and twenty. So that's the back pieces there. So that's the that's the back side. Okay, so these are right, which means is this wrong? Is that A eleven or is that that is that is A ten? got it messed up but yes well um yeah so there's a dragon there are there is no friendly animal or friendly slime which you would find often in these kinds of stories uh but where i left off in the manga there are uh girls these kind of raising as his daughters that are mythical plant girls um because of course uh and also, yeah, I think I said that his younger sister and also his childhood sweetheart have both quit their jobs and are now have now moved to the village. And the childhood friend makes total sense. The little sister is a weird thing where you, where you get the sense that like maybe in the light novel, there's an explanation. The only thing I can think of is she only got those military awards to like make sure her brother would be looked after maybe. So she didn't need it once he got kicked out. But anyway, uh, everything is fucking good. Uh, nothing is bad. And uh, oh, yes, yeah, some demon folk showed up, but they're also fine and happy to live there. Uh, every Everything is pretty OK. Um, it is the most like like. Apparently that's supposed to be a dangerous forest. And we see that once one time it's mentioned that that forest is dangerous and then never brought up again as if to say, yeah, don't worry about that shit. It's fine. Like so much of this series is like, yeah, it's fucking fine. Everything's cool. Uh, it is such a, it is a capital S capital L slow life series that, uh, that I should say I enjoy, I enjoy it. Um, I'm hoping that there'll be more chapters soon uh, uh, than what I have read. I would like to keep reading it because I have enjoyed my time with it. Um, it's not for everyone. Even as the kicked slash banished uh, subgenre goes, it's certainly not my favorite. It's not in the top 10. But like as a thing I was reading, the, like mostly in the last two weeks. Yeah, all right. I liked it. I'll read it. I'll, I'll, I'll read it again. I'll read more of it, I should say. Um, and now it's the part of the stream where I talk to you about the anime I watched since Saturday's stream. Because that is what I do. Uh, I try to do on these streams in the second hour. Is talk about the anime that I have been watching. Uh, is so that you can follow along. Or if you're watching it as well, we can compare notes. Or if you're not watching it, maybe, it's a sh maybe I will recommend a show that appeals to you. And you want to check out in the future perhaps perhaps we perhaps no um the strongest tanks labyrinth raids uh our main character uh rudd uh he is attempting he is going to attempt to make it farther than anyone has ever made it in a uh a quote-unquote unbeatable dungeon to show off and show up the guild masters that were looking down on him and his guild. Uh, he's trying to show them uh, that they done fucked up by underestimating him. Um, he's there with some of his guild members. And we didn't really get a chance to talk too much about. We didn't see much in the show so far. Lily and Lilia, who are twins, who are guild employees from the town. Um, so Lilia, who is one of the employees... Uh, asks for Rudd's advice because she's not comf confident as much as her sister, uh, but she wants to be more capable. Uh, and then there's a little bit of like, uh, uh, Lily is like, 
that Lily's clumsy. There's a whole like, oop, they fell into a bed joke. That's not really a joke. It's just a, a fucking stupid scene. Um, Lilia uh, wants to talk to Rudd. She reveals their tragic backstory, which I know is rude of me to say it like that, but it's true. That's what we see is their tragic backstory where they were uh, uh, they were in an abusive home. Uh, which they escaped. Um, and uh, Lilia is uh, is just trying to make it. And also, uh, Lily is generally afraid of men because of that situation. But she seems to like Rudd. So we're, they're hoping that they can build a life together where they're protected and taken care of. And it's a nice little sisterly bond between the twins. Um they enter the labyrinth and Lily wants to be the raid leader. She feels like that that's a good spot for her. And everyone's like, yeah, all, all right. Um, Rudd, who became the labyrinth guardian of his hometown labyrinth. Uh, he realizes, oh, as labyrinth, I have special abilities now as the labyrinth uh, guardian. Uh, I now instinctively understand how other labyrinth are, are, labyrinths are set up. Uh, and where the monsters are going to be. Uh, and then uh, Marius is with them. Marius was it was the previous guardian of the last one. And they haven't really talked that much. Or if they have, we haven't seen them talk much. And so basically, Rudd's just like, hey, are what's he, what is your deal? Like, are you a human or are you a monster? Like, what 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 what's what's going on? Um, and he's like. I'm a demonoid. I'm a demi-human. Uh, and uh, our ancestors, we worship demons instead of gods. So I'm an offshoot of that. It's like, oh, oh okay. Um, and apparently, uh, demonoids become labyrinth guardians because the labyrinths were created by demons to kill humans. It was like it's a, to, to entice humans to explore in order to kill them. Uh, which Nin is like, that's definitely not what the church tells us. The church says that it's uh, it, labyrinths were made by God as an opportunity, a place to uh, improve your skills and, and obtain wealth, which is like, that's, yeah, probably, I guess not. Um, on the 50th floor, they find a bone dragon, and we get to see basically a montage of their of them fighting this bone dragon, which takes a really long time. And by the end of the episode, they're like, okay, uh, um, we have to make it to the 51st floor, which is, um, that's the, f no one's ever made it past the 51st floor. So we got to prepare. And that's basically what we're going to prepare. So we're in the dungeon or the labyrinth, I should say, exploration part of the series here. Um, uh, we're almost at the point where I have stopped reading where I'm like, we're caught up with where I've been in the manga. So that's kind of interesting for me on a personal level to be like, oh, I'm going to find out more about this series uh, now. And then, oh, that's neat. Uh, I'm still enjoying it. Is it still an easy watch? The animation quality isn't incredible, but it's certainly good. Uh, it, it is uh, reasonable, um, maybe even enjoyable. If that's what you're into. So yeah, I would say strongest uh, tanks, labyrinth raids. That's an easy watch. Uh, and I'm looking forward to Rudd having to show his stuff and the team working well together and all that. See if they can accomplish their goals. Uh, and then Fluffy Paradise. Not a lot of fluff in this episode. Boo. I was hoping for more fluff uh, in Fluffy Paradise. Uh, let's see. So the... Uh, guild employees uh, and the town official from last episode are apparently going to work for the family. Uh, Nemo, Nemo showing favoritism, wanting them to have jobs because they're, uh, you know, quality people. You got to get a grab quality people when you find them. Um, we do get a, yes, Nathan, th th there, there is some fluff at the end. So yes. Um, so uh, apparently Shinky, has gone off and is back and is like, yeah, hey, um, uh, 
I made all the goblins decide to serve me because I'm a hobgoblin. I'm a special version of hobgoblin. So yeah, don't worry about it. I got the goblins there. They, they understand what's going on. Uh, they, they're with us. Uh, but there's still a kobold issue um, because the kobolds have been threatening a, a nearby town and they're being uh, led by a werewolf. So that's, that's going to be tough. Um, uh, the dad leaves and, uh, to start working on the monster refuge that Nema has been pushing for. Um, and also a guy named Philip is going to be showing up. Who's an old, uh, adventuring friend. Um, Nema's group goes to Lenin's, uh, Lenzi. Yeah. Lenis, Lenis. Uh, and they talk to the marquee, uh, and basically, he's like, yeah, um, we got this group uh, coming and they're going to help fight the kobolds. Don't, so we're just going to kind of hang 10 a little bit here. We're going to hang out and then we'll get we'll, we're getting back up. So don't you worry about it. Nema wants to go explore the city and uh, there's a young. Hey, there's a kobold in the city. What's a kobold doing here? And that kobold is getting fucking bullied by uh, a group of kids, including, uh, or, or, you know, yeah, uh, uh, this guy named, a uh, kid named Belgar, who is the son of an adventurer uh, that is trying to, like, show that he's tough. Uh, Nema uh, kind of gets the bullies to get out of there, and then she makes the tough decision. We are going to get this kobold back to its family, even though that's going to be dangerous. Uh, definitely dangerous and probably not the wisest choice, but you know, uh, this kobold is a cute puppy ish thing, pup wolf. So, you know, got to help out. Uh, it is the cutest thing, the closest thing to a fluffy friend. And this episode has, um, there's some other stuff that happened there, but that's the most important elements of it. Uh, you know. There's a dog friend in the opening credits. Like, we all know where this is going. We we don't all know, but we have a we can pretty much guess where this is going. Um, it you know like yeah they're gonna they're good. Weirdly enough, I think they're gonna become friends. Uh, and he's gonna like oh she's gonna like name him even though she understands she shouldn't be naming animals. She's gonna name him and he's gonna evolve and. And be a friend and it'll be great. Like, that's probably what's happening. Uh, and that's cool. Um, and then, like, at least one of the, gr either the group mentioned in the, ep in the episode or the person mentioned or both are going to turn out to be not cool. Like, we have not really run into, like, the most we had was last episode there was, like, the Maquis or the local lord was, like, corrupt. But we haven't really run into, like, People who show up and go like, who can't get who who won't get won over by Nemo because like even though the, the the people that run you know control the dragons or the other animals at the royal like everybody that was just like this girl isn't special whatever like come around because they're like damn everybody all the animals divine beasts love this girl all right she's pretty cool um like. Everybody has so far come around, so I am expecting a, a point where we get a character who is like, actually, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck this kid. I'm sick of this kid. I, I am expecting that to happen. All right. As I body complete this kit, holy shit, we're body completing this kit. Uh, now is the part of the stream where I want to hear from you. What are you watching right now? What are you playing? What's got you going? What are you What are you into? I played a lot of Hearthstone this morning, uh, and during my lunch break, I played Hearthstone. It was good. I had some good games. Uh, I finished some some of my weeklies that came that come out every Monday, so I got some weeklies done. It was uh, It was a good time. I, I was pleased with uh, with Hearthstone, uh, and the big thing that I played was. Helldivers 2 Qs. Now, I am not here to be a dick about it. 
I'm, I, I would be a dick about a lot of things. I'm not going to be a dick about Helldivers 2. I fucking get it. It is uh, more money, more problems. Uh, Helldivers was a modest success. Helldivers 2 is the game of the moment. It's $40. It's fun to play with friends. It's It's got a lot of elements that people are into and looking for. It's a good one of those, uh, as they say. And it's very popular. And so it was hard yesterday getting in games of Helldivers 2. I did. Um, also, I should say, uh, I was gifted this not from the not from the studio, none of that. A friend of mine bought me uh, uh, Helldivers 2 because really wanted to play Helldivers 2. Uh, this is a group uh, game uh, for friends. I have a multiplayer crew. We were go- we were still playing Halo. Like that's like. Nothing was clicking with us for a while there. Um, luckily, they didn't want to play Pal World because I don't want. I didn't want to play Pal World. Um, uh, if you like Pal World, hell yeah, I'm glad you like Pal World. It just wasn't gonna. It just didn't do anything for me. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Helldivers Two became the uh, the game that we wanted to check out. So so we checked out uh, Helldivers Two, and I've been playing that, and it's been. Fucking good. Oh, actually, apparently I should put these. I should, apparently I should put this on before I put that on there. Um, apparently I should be snapping this in from the top, which is weird. But hopefully it means these won't paw. This is where our uh, our um, uh, beam sabers go, and hopefully it means the beam sabers won't fall out if it's designed like that. All right, we're now body complete. We now have a gun and uh, a shield. In the beam sabers, we can just jump and do the beam sabers here. B33. We'll just do the beam sabers because I don't think we're going to finish the gun or the shield tonight. Maybe we'll finish the shield. Honestly, we might actually, we, we might finish this kit. I'm looking at the time. We might just finish this kit because there's not a lot left to do. I got two things to do. We'll see. We might be, we might finish this kit. And I might start the, uh, the double X on Thursday, but we don't have much left to do. It depends on how complicated. We'll do the gun first. I mean, the shield is only a, a couple pieces. So, yeah, let's do the shield because we'll just get it done. We're going to jump around order here because um, why not? Put the beam sabers in there. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm playing Helldivers 2. Like I said, a lot of it was playing uh, Q. We were hanging out in a Discord, chatting with each other, uh, the, 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 the the friend crew, seeing what's up, uh, chatting about a bunch of bullshit. And then occasionally we would get some games in and have a good time playing. And then we would be suffering, uh, waiting to do other things. And I had a friend who was like streaming. Uh, he was playing another video game on his uh ps5 and streaming that to the discord while we waited for to play the game we wanted to play and we were just bullshitting and it was like a, it was a good yesterday was a good day of just goofing around waiting to to play more games that we wanted to play um it was a good time let's see so we had, it ended up being fun but it was like it was more annoying than I would than I would like uh, as a as a experience. I was hoping that it would be a better a better time. Um, I'm going to use the small blade on this because I think the small blades are hilarious. I love I love a beam like short sword. I just think that's very funny. So we'll go we'll get that done. We'll put that in this hand along with the shield which we need to assemble here. We need a one and a C11. So we'll get that going. Um, I'm going to, uh, yeah, and that's it as, as far as gaming goes. I watched them wrestling last night. So took a just pro wrestling last night with friends. Uh, big ups to my girl, Arasu, and her tag team partner, Suzume, Daisy Monkey. They are... Uh, they're going to be chat. They won the Max Hart tournament. They're going to be challenging for the tag belts. Uh, I think they have a good chance of winning them because 
The people that currently have the tag belts are uh, one of them is a stalwart of the division or of the of the company, but also the other is a part timer. Uh, so maybe they just want to have the belt on someone that's there full time. Also, RSU and Susan May are just a great, great little tag team. Uh, and I would I would love to see them uh, with the belts. I think that would be wonderful. Lord Crashing got Deep Rock Galactic Survivors on Steam, and it's pretty cool. It's a big budget ass game that drains my Stream Deck's batteries as a result. I have heard that that game is a little brutal on the battery if you're if you're Stream Deck in it. Uh, so that that does not surprise me that that is uh, that that is a little rough there. Um, but I'm glad you're having a good time with it. Uh, Aristophan finished Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which was wonderful. Ichiban is a treasure. Hell yeah, he is. Uh, now I'm playing the uh, Yuffie DL, or, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, DLC in Final Fantasy VII Remake in preparation for the sequel. That's right. More Final Fantasy VII Remake stuff for people. The people. They're getting more of their, their Final Fantasy VII's. Hell yeah. Enjoy. Uh, learn more about that Sethiroth guy. I'm sure it'll work out great. Uh, Nathan Explosion caught up on uh, uh, Tsukamichi, which contain, uh, continues to be my favorite isekai. They introduced a new human hero that I wasn't too big on. Now they have interacted with the main cast. Things are picking up. I also started uh, Puchigiri, which is a map of the map of show no one is talking about. It's a high school delinquent show with some magic powers that I'm liking so far. Yeah, so on both those animes you're talking about. One, uh, Tsukamichi, I am still an episode behind on. Tsukamichi is one of those shows where, like, when it's not him, I'm less interested, right? Like, I, I like a lot of the support characters, but when they go, hey, let's let's look at the other heroes. I'm just, you know, the other humans, I should say. I'm just not as interested. Uh, it's like, let's let's learn more about their struggles. I'm just like, uh, I, I guess I don't I don't really want to. I, I don't really want to. Um, and that's just my vibe on, on that show. I, again, I'm not caught up, so maybe, maybe I'll change my mind in the near future or something. Um, but that, that is generally my vibe on that series. Uh, and then Buchigiri, yeah, that is the MAPA show no one's talking about. And I, 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 I didn't like the pilot. I, I probably should give it one more episode. I just didn't. It didn't the the Buchigiri's pilot did not mesh with me. It it did not uh uh it did not make me want to watch more of it. But it I I could come around. Uh Lord Crash says I started Ultros, which is rad, hoping to get Pacific Drive this week for a good spooky time. That does sound like a good spooky time. Like uh as as you as you know, I'm not here for the, the spooky. That's not my jam. I'm not a I'm not a spooky boy. Uh, I'm not here for that, but I do want those games to exist for people because I know that people really like them. So I, I hope I hope you enjoy. Uh, Lord Crash says I did get more time into Final Fantasy VII Remake as I make the final attack on uh, on uh, Shinra, but I have a good laugh at a bit where you can either take the crew up elevators or up fifty flights of stairs. Uh, I chose the stairs and enjoyed Barrett complaining as you walk up the stairs, which tires out our crew, and Barrett is so mad at Cloud for doing this to him. That's fun that they included that. That's some good that's some good nonsense. That's that's uh that's some uh big time shenanigans. I appreciate that. Um but yeah, my gaming stuff is, is right now uh I got a text message right before the stream went live. Uh, of people being like, uh, hey, Pat, when you're done streaming, uh, we're, we, you know, meet us here. We're going to try to get some games in. And so we're hoping that uh, late night, my time, you know, kind of late, their time, very late, my time, we might be able to get some games in of Helldivers too. So apparently, uh, because I'm the guy that stays up late, uh, one of my friends is like, I don't have to be to work till the afternoon tomorrow. So I want to try to get some games in. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. I do have to get up early for me tomorrow. It's not early, but for me, I'm getting up earlier than I would like. 
uh, because I have to go to the post office. Because every Tuesday, uh, or for or while my parents are out of town, I go to the post office and mail them stuff that comes to the house. So I have to do that tomorrow. And so I have to get up a little earlier than I would like. Other, because if I don't get up earlier than I would, the you know, uh, I'm going to be there for even longer. What I have to do is I have to thread the needle of the post office in town. If I get there too early, I will get there uh, at... It will be everybody that has been lined up outside of the post office or inside the post office if they let people in line up uh, from when it opened. I want to get there when most of that line has gotten through. But if I wait too long, then I will have to wait for somebody to go on their lunch because they will rotate through lunch breaks. So if I wait too long, then they won't have enough employees because that Post office is underfunded and underserved. Uh, so yes, so it's strats. Also, reminder, there, the post office wasn't open yesterday, which means that anyone that went to the post, that would want to go to the post office on Monday will also be going tomorrow. So I have to thread the needle. Uh, I, I'm going to be prepared to get there and there will be a long line. Like I am ready for that. I have everything I need. Uh, also, this post office does not have a uh, machine that you can use. Like it does not have a, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, a, a, a postal processing machine. I have to get in line. It makes me mad. It should have, it should have at least one machine. I should be able to just do it myself and wait in that line because I'm, uh, everything is labeled. Everything is ready to go. I just have to pay for it. I have to have it weighed and paid for. So, uh, but I can't do that. Uh, that there is no machine for me to do that, which is annoying. Stamps.com. I mean, that's the thing. I'm not going to join stamps.com for, uh, a month and a half every year. Uh, cause that's all I really need it for. All right. We got our gun done here. Um, but yes, having prepaid postage and all that would be nice and get the scale and all that. But yeah, no, it's just, it's just something I have to do and I'll do it. Uh, that's why I've been going to Arby's because Arby's is across the street from the post office. I went twice. I'm not going tomorrow. Oh, also, I, I didn't mention this as we finish up this kit here, which we're doing there. I did not expect to finish this kit today. Hey, we did the legs, the waist, and the weapons and the shield, and I was not expecting to do all of that today. I didn't think we were going to finish this. We did. Um, uh, I have Girl Scout cookies that I'm eating. I'm going to try not to eat too many of them. I told my, my parents that there'd be Girl Scout cookies when they came back. And that was mostly one to let them know. And two, to make it so that I don't eat all of them before they get back. Cause if, cause I, I might eat all of them. Uh, I got three boxes of the thin mints and one box of s'mores. Uh, the s'mores are very good. Uh, I just didn't want four. I had to buy four boxes. That's the minimum for shipping is four boxes. Uh, and I did it for Danny O'Dwyer's daughter. If you got, if I got a friend with a kid that age, I'm going, I'm, go, I'm going to buy them. Uh, if I can rant about podcast ads, says Lord Crashton, my re-listen to the Beast Cast has made me hate San Diego because that's 95 percent of the ads, that, and they often play back to back. They're also terrible because they're a form of sports cheer. Give me a why, why style of ads. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're just getting targeted ads about San Diego. It's almost like I bet you could just find like I bet there's a torrent of all of the beast casts and they're like and if 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 someone went to the trouble I got I actually don't know this but if someone went to the trouble of archiving all of those on an archive site I would guess that they would probably rip the ones that didn't have ads That's just going to be my guess Oh, I do have premium, so I could use the premium feed. Yeah, you probably could. I, I Again, I don't know. I'm assuming if someone went to the trouble of archiving all of those, they would archive the ones that didn't have ads, but I don't know. And it, you know who knows? Uh, I'm not advocating for anything. Merely conjecture. We finished this kit. We're done. We're done. The kit is done. Now is the part of the stream where I say goodbye to you for the night. And we go raid and we go hang out with other people who are doing cool shit out there. 
it's Monday. We're going to see if, if Merry Monday is happening. If Merry Monday is happening, then we raid Mary Kish. If Merry Monday is not happening, we raid somebody else. Those are the rules. Uh, Mary is taking the night off. That makes sense. I'm sure Mary had been doing some travel and such. We talked about Hell Divers too. We should raid my buddy Will, uh, uh, Will Smith. Uh, it looks like Will Smith uh, is playing Hell Divers too, um, and so we should go raid Will. I'm waiting for an ad to finish. It looks like is. Will is taking a break, it looks like. So we're not going to raid Will. I would have liked to have raided Will, but it looks like Will is... Uh... Wait. He's talking. We're going to raid Will. I think Will is actually... Uh, Technology's Will Smith. I believe Will is having some technical issues, but we'll add to that by being in his chat. So feel free to come along on this raid. We're going to go hang out with Will Smith. I love Will. Uh, uh, I've bought Girl Scout cookies from his daughter previously, but this year it was, uh, it was Daniel Dwyer's time. So come along on this raid. I will see you tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern for Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. I'm going to show a bunch of stuff. I hope I don't get demonetized. On, I hope I don't get issues on Twitter. The YouTube archive is probably going to be busted, but we're going to watch some cool modern wrestling uh, tomorrow night. Have a great night, everybody. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.